Okay, I'm going to break this drawing down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can have a go, create this, and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, we're going to break this down into steps so that you learn about the painting process and techniques, but also about the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that isn't to say you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Within the app Procreate, in the canvas information here, the dimensions that I've chosen are the default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And then also the color profile settings, I've chosen the sRGB code, the one that ends in 2.1. And again, it's here on the list by default within the Procreate app. Also within the app by default are all the brushes that I'm going to be using. So you don't need to go and download any at all. So I'm going to be using within airbrushing, the soft brush, the medium brush and the medium hard brush too. So the top three. Possibly within inking I might use the studio pen. As yet I'm undecided, but we'll see. But definitely within organic I'm going to be using an amended version of the rainforest brush. So I'll just reset it and I will amend it later on. But I will explain that very clearly at that point. Then finally, for the color palette, I've chosen a selection of colors. And if you tap on a particular color, go to the value section here, you'll notice an area called hexadecimal where you can put your codes one at a time and press enter. The color appears up here, and then you can just tap it into this palette area. All of the codes are down in this video description. So just need to copy and paste them into this box one at a time. Or also next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is also the place where you can support this channel and gain access to exclusive content, such as extended versions of most of these tutorials. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who do support me over at Patreon. It really does make a enormous difference to my ability to keep moving forward with this channel. So thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, we're gonna get started. First thing I'm going to do is rotate the canvas to the portrait orientation. And then I'm going to go to the colors. I'm going to use the first color on the top row. I'm going to drag from the color circle into the canvas and release. And that flood fills the whole canvas. I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to create a new layer, layer two. I'm also going to go to the second color on the top row. I'm also going to go to the organic rainforest brush. And I'm going to reset the brush. I have used it previously. So we still have the settings from then. So I'm going to tap on it again, change this spacing from 27 all the way up to about 50% and click done. So with the second color on the top row at 3% size, maybe 80% opacity, I'm just going to start tapping in and I'm going to do this a little sporadically. So I'll just zoom in a touch. Just try to space this out a little bit. do want to preserve some gaps, not too many. We'll go down to about, if we just zoom out about a third of the way down, that should do us. I'm going to go to the third color on the top row. Same kind of technique, but just slightly a little bit more random. Perhaps I'll even turn it down to 2% and maybe just slightly engineer this a bit more towards the center to allow it to cluster a bit more in the middle. But again, it's still pretty random. A bit more clustered in the central area here. Don't spend too long on it though. Something like this. I'm going to go to the fourth color on the top row. I'm going to turn it down even further, lowest part of the 2%. Just start to kind of tap this in a little bit more. Again, pretty randomly. We're just creating some random kind of textures there, really. Then with that whole layer, layer two, go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and we're just going to blur it in to about the 5%. Deselect. I'm going to go to my layers, create a new layer, layer three. I'm going to go to the brushes, airbrushing, soft brush, back to my colors. I'm going to use the fifth color on the top row. 
I'm going to have the size maybe at 3% size and super low on the opacity, so only 2%. And then we're just going to bring in some lines from the top of our scene and just bring some sun rays down into our scene. Now it's going to start off pretty subtle. You're hardly going to notice it. We can have it slightly fanned out as well so we can bring it almost like it's that direction, then straighten and then tilt it there. Maybe we could put it up a percentage or two, maybe 5%. We're building it up super subtly, really gradually. And you can't really go too far wrong at 2%. You just need to keep going over and over and over it, really. And again, just tilt it a little bit. I don't care about this area. We're going to obscure that anyway. Straighten it up in the center. And then just slightly start to tilt it the other way. But again, nothing too dramatic, really. Keep it more on the just a, ever so slight. Scribble over the larger blocks, maybe just one or two areas like this where it, it is broken. I'm going to put it up to 40% size. And in this top area, I'm just going to start tapping it in. More in this area, just to bring more of that kind of radiant light into the whole area like so. I'm going to go to the eraser on the same layer. I'm going to set the eraser to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put it at 2% size and pretty low as well, so maybe about 20%. And then we can just start to bring the suggestion that we've got kind of tree trunks and branches, things that kind of cut through this environment. And initially we can just kind of get it placed in there. You don't need to overdo it once you start to build up a sense of things you can always go back in and just really double down on some of this effect so branches tree trunks we're getting an effect in there initially then maybe we could put the strength up to more like 50 percent and then when there's like a thicker more definite tree trunk in here let's go over it a few times Another one here, perhaps. Another one over here. Again, pretty vague. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer four. And I'm still going to use the rainforest brush. I'm going to go maybe the last color on the top row. Well, it's still the seventh color, but it's the last of the colors that I do have up there. I'm going to put it at 2% size, 80% opacity. And I'm just going to start peppering in, but not too much. Just a smattering of this really vibrant light effect into our scene. It can cut in front of some of these tree trunks. We do have a concentration of it here in the middle and the top. I like to build up a little bit more and peter out to the edges as well, but not too much. Maybe a little bit down here. It's coming again into the central area. That could be quite effective. Just a little bit down there, but not too much. And just a few spots of it, just petering out. Maybe just build up a little bit more here. I quite like that in that area and also up here. We can then go to that layer, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. And then I'm going to go backwards a color. So I'm going to go to the sixth color. And with the same brush, not changing anything, I'm just adding into some of these areas and bringing out a slight hint more of this vibrant green, just taking away from the, the kind of yellowness a little bit. It's still the same settings, but you can be rough because the alpha lock means that you can only color inside the, the shape. It won't add anything else other than with inside the shape that you've already added on that layer. So it's a good way of just affecting the colors slightly without having to worry. There you go. So that's just brought a, a slightly richer sense of green into that. I'm going to go to my layers and create another layer, layer 5, and I'm also going to go back to the fifth colour, this kind of light grey. Back in again with the airbrushing soft brush. Back down to something like 5% size and 2% strength still. And again, just bring some of this light effect peeking down. And again, it's going to kind of multiply with... In fact, what we could do is we can go to the layer, tap on the end and scroll down to the add and then it will 
add to the green that we've already added and multiply that up. That will really push the glow effect really nicely. I'm going to turn it down from 5 to 3%. Let's try that and just push my little beam over this direction. Bring this down a touch. Couple of beams over here. Again, we've got that fanning out, but we don't want to make it too dramatic. We should try and keep the lines in a straight line, but again, we're just going for an effect. This is very much kind of background detail. It is important, it sets the scene, but we don't want it to be the absolute focus. It's actually going to be slightly blurred out, so we'll be really focusing more in the foreground areas. Let's just go over that beam up a few more times just to really build it in and that one something like this and then again i'll put it up to maybe 15 percent size two percent opacity and just again just multiply that up a little bit near the top and that's really selling the idea that light's pouring in from that area now i'm going to go to layer four tap on it and turn off the alpha lock and then i'm going to merge layers four three and two together just pinch them together a bit tricky to do but persist you'll do it I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it in slightly, about the 4%, deselect. And I'm also going to do that with layer 5. So go back up to layer 5, adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in, this time to about 10%. And it just softens it in, gets rid of any of those obvious brush marks. I'm going to go back to layer 2. I'm going to click the plus symbol and create a layer 4 that goes underneath layer 5. I'm going to go back in with the rainforest brush within organic and I'm going to use the second color on the middle row. We are going to concentrate in this lower area so really it's about from the third of the weight and upwards a little bit. We might just condense some of this together and squash it together nearer the top. It is encroaching quite a way down into the scene. We might just need to address that but initially we're just going to bring some darker colors into this area. especially on this ground part. Once we get down to closer to the kind of halfway point, we can just start to flatten it in, really allow it to condense. Keep going over it. And beyond that, I'm not too worried. I'm going to go to the third color then at the bottom of this. So this is lower than halfway. I'm just going to circle in this texture like so, and then circle it upwards a little bit as well. I can allow it to encroach upwards a little bit. So it's a kind of circular motion, but I'm also kind of tapping whilst I'm circling. So you get a, rather than being an exact circle, well, even that's not such a big deal. I'm actually kind of tapping it at the same time. So it's just kind of feathering in this dark color here, and you can see it mixing together in quite a pleasing way, I think. And then for this, lower area probably we'll try with the airbrushing soft brush 15% size 80% strength and let's just really block in this nice dark color for this lower section and again let's go over it a couple of times if you need to and that's really focused our attention to the light that's coming in in the top area in a really nice way i think just lightly go over this to kind of soften it in you get the nice kind of soft brush blending it together a little bit there too, like that. And then we're also going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it across about 5% and deselect. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer. This is also called layer 5, but it is underneath the light beams. I perhaps could go to the top version of layer 5, click on it, rename it, and this could be the light. So we'll just rename it as light perhaps. Click return. So now we can go back to the layer five in with the organic rainforest brush and we'll go back to a lighter color again. So we'll go for the second color on the top row. And then there's going to be a point here where it. We're establishing the kind of ground where we're going to get the light hitting low lying bushes, leaves, foliage on this level. And well, we're a bit above halfway. I actually would prefer this if it was encroaching a little bit further up. So let's just do that. Let's take it up a little bit more. 
just tap it a few times into that dark area so we've got the nice dark color as a, a kind of bed background for these lighter colors to go over the top i think that works quite nicely let's go back to our colors perhaps we'll go for the middle row colors we'll go for the fourth color and then we can just start to bring this further forward on this side Again, this is only 3% size and 60% opacity. Bring it over on this side. Then we'll go along to the fifth color. And we're getting more and more vibrant with this green the closer it gets to us. And we can remove some of this, but it's just starting to create a, a really nice kind of green look. A nice gradient of blue greens to really more vibrant greens that get closer to us. Go for the next green along, which is the sixth color. And this is a darker green, but again, we're really pushing the, the vibrancy of it. I'm going to leave the central central area a little bit blank because we're going to add some stones. Go along to the seventh color. And we'll get some lighter colors coming in in the foreground. Just spread that in there a little bit. Okay, I feel like we've really created a sense of like an overgrown area, which I think works quite nicely. I'm going to go to our layers and create a new layer. I'm going to go to layer 5 and create a new layer, layer 6. Now I'm going to go back to the airbrushing, go for the medium brush. And I'm going to use this first colour on the bottom row, which is going to appear too dark initially, but it's fine, we can amend it. I'm going to put a 2% size, 100% opacity. And this is where we're going to establish our kind of stones in our scene. So we're going to have a really nice foreground one here. In fact, let's put it up bigger. We'll go to 4%. Let's really be bold. We'll just set a really nice big stone in the foreground. Maybe another one here, like an ellipse, but an extremely rough ellipse. Maybe another stone here. Another one next to it here. And we're going to just have them going slightly smaller as they go back. So let's down to 3%. We can have them kind of placed in a stream as they go further and further back they're going to collide with each other a little bit let's turn it down even more two percent new shapes are just going to start merging into one and that is absolutely fine by me back up again three percent i might just make this come off the bottom of the canvas make it even bigger round off some of those edges some bigger shapes back here as well some rocks off to the side maybe we're just getting a general impression of these kind of stones in there initially something like this so we've just created the silhouette of them then i'm going to go to the layer tap on it and put on the alpha lock i'm going to go to the next color along which is the second color on the bottom row i'm going to go back to the organic rainforest brush which seems a bit strange but i'm just going to push see how versatile this brush is let's put it down to the lower part of two percent size 20 percent opacity and we have some sun coming in here but i'm going to have a lot more sun and light pouring into the scene so i'm now with this 20 percent strength just going to start illuminating the top part of our stones and the reason i'm using this texture perhaps i'll put it up a little bit maybe 30 percent the reason I'm using this texture is it's a really nice, just broken texture. And it's great for foliage, but with the alpha lock on, we can't go beyond the crisp edge. And it's just a really kind of nice way of creating that broken texture that you might want on stones. So we started with a really nice, subtle, dark gray on top of the black. Let's just build that in initially. We've got some lighter colors. So we've got like a feel for them being quite flat. It's almost like if it's a coin, it's got like a dark edge where you're not going to do too much on. But the top kind of flat surface, you can go over it a little bit. Just keep building it further and further back. Do something different back here with those ones, perhaps. I'm going to go on to the third colour on the bottom row. Same settings, and we can start to just kind of push it a little bit more. Don't need to have it consistent either. 
have some gaps just concentrate the light in one or two areas but less in others have it blocked in in some bits recircle really it in get a nice light area there for example why not maybe just turn it down lower on the two percent certainly as we go further back we can just create a series of kind of blobs of this lighter color maybe they fuse together in some areas maybe they don't maybe you could have them quite spaced apart and just start to treat these stones in a slightly different way perhaps as they get further back we just yeah spend less and less time you can see how rough i'm being with this and it's okay at this stage already it's starting to kind of build in an effect i think that can work for us we'll go for the fourth color on the bottom row still at the 30 percent or if it's accidentally gone to the 31 or 29 doesn't really matter we'll put it at the bottom end of two percent be a bit more controlled just in perhaps just a select few areas we're just getting these lighter colors coming in especially along that top edge of the stone perhaps and that's easier when it's a separate shape you can just go right up to the very edge of it because it's got a crisp edgeness to it anyway what perhaps i ought to do with some of these distant stones we don't want them to be too silhouetted so i'll go for the second color on the middle row i'll go in with the airbrushing soft brush put it maybe at 10 percent size and 30 percent opacity and i'm just going to go over the ones in the distance i want them to kind of blend in generally to the area that they're in just go over them you can still see them but the absolute black silhouette is just subdued bring it in here a little bit and it is obviously interfering with that light on top of the stone but not so much you can still identify where they are and that's enough and that's what i require at this point okay i'm gonna go to my layers and create a new layer layer seven back to my colors i'm gonna go for the ninth color i'm gonna have it at two percent size and maybe 50 percent strength and some of these ones in what is effectively almost like the middle area i want them to be really catching the light extremely strongly so perhaps i'll put it down even further into the one percent i want a really nice crisp edge at the top of our stones and forms in which the light is significantly reflecting the light back so just carefully trace around some of these rocks it's going to be a thin amount of light because it is very much in the kind of back there so it's not going to be light coming at it from this side so it's going to be largely in shadow from this perspective but certainly along that edge it's going to reflect back a lot of the light and you zoom out you can really start to see the effect and how it relates to the sun rays and we can start to bring it further this direction as well so yeah we really want a thin slice of that along the edge but you can also kind of retreat back further into the shape of the rock a little bit in places around the edges of some of these shapes but once we start to get a sense of that we can also go to a really nice light color down here so we're going to go for the six color and we're going to put it even further down the one percent not quite at the very bottom but almost and then some of these rocks are going to shine back really in a nice vibrant way in fact we ought to perhaps go to the airbrushing soft brush put that at one percent size and maybe maybe 40 percent with this brush and it's just gonna be a little bit more precision you can just build in some light that's really reflecting back and you zoom out and you're going to start getting the impact of that and it's going to mix with the vibrant green build up that effect perhaps we could dial it back a little bit so maybe go back to the fifth color I'm gonna blend it in with that so we've got a slightly cooler lighter color as well as the really intense white then we can go back to the fourth color and again we can just start to tap it into some of these stones as they come closer to us just kind of building up some of this texture quite nicely 
and you can see it's creating that perspective for us. We know that there's a lot more light in this central kind of area and the focus is going to be in that kind of point there. I'm just going to create a new layer, layer 8. I'm also going to go back to the organic rainforest brush and I'm going to go to a vibrant colour again, so maybe the ninth colour on the middle row. 2% size, higher up and about 50% strength. And I'm going to start building in, in the kind of bushes that bank this area. I'm going to start tapping in some of this bright green in there as well. Obviously it's going to affect this central area where the stones are, but it's going to affect anything kind of butting up towards them as well on either side. Fade it up, maybe we'll turn it down a little bit, so 30%. That way we can start to just retreat it back higher up here. Bring it back down. I'm okay if it starts to condense together a little bit. We've also got an even more vibrant colour, the 10th colour. Can bring that in, maybe turn it down even further. Lowest part of two percent. Can really start to be a little bit more precise with this color. Then back up as it gets slightly closer to us. We're still going to have some of the, the bright color. So I'm going to go back to layer seven, and I'm going to go in with the ninth color again. Perhaps this time I will go back in with the airbrushing soft brush. Same settings, 1% size and 40% strength. I'm going to use it to mix with some of the textures for the moss. We're going to have this kind of effect perhaps where the, the stone is maybe surrounded by moss. So it's almost got like a jacket of moss surrounding it. And then you're just going to see bits of the stone colour emerging through in some places, but big areas are just going to be pretty much stones completely coated in the moss as well. And I'm just going to kind of bolster around some of these shapes. Just around some of these stones. You can blend it into some of these bits at the edges too. Now, bear in mind, we've got this kind of a shape because got 3D shapes that are kind of rounded and it's really just the top edge that we want to be highlighted. Just go around some of these edges, perhaps just need a little bit of a crisper line in one or two areas. Again, zoom out, check, and I think that's really starting to work nicely now. Building that effect up. I think the rainforest brush is great and giving us that texture, but we do need just perhaps a slightly crisp edge too. Hopefully this is representing pretty accurately on camera. I feel like I want to just add some more visible trees into our scene. So I'm from layer eight, I'm going to create a new layer, layer nine. I'm going to go in with the airbrushing medium brush back to my colors i'm going to use the third color on the middle row maybe from somewhere in this area here i'm just going to add tree trunk make it quite thick feels like an appropriate area for that level of darkness of a tree trunk just turn it down perhaps to the two percent and maybe we've got kind of a splitting off and some branches that just kind of cut through there as well and I'll just put it back up again, maybe 3% up here and another tree in this area. Could be a little bit darker there perhaps actually, it's pushed it a bit closer to us as the viewer. Maybe I could go for the first colour on the bottom row and I could just go over that a bit more. I can always subdue it slightly, I know it's going to be almost like the blackest of blacks, similar to what we've got over here, but I have ways of subduing that if need be. I just get it in there initially, soften it in perhaps with the organic rainforest brush, 2% size, 100% opacity, and just use some of that darkness to kind of blend in here as well. Soften that in, back to the third color on the middle row, and similarly, just soften that in, blend it in. Now, it's important, 
when you're doing that perhaps just zoom out because you can see the mistake i've made there but it's fine easily fixed we can go to the airbrushing medium brush again and just push that up to the very top two percent for this bit perhaps i'll put another substantial tree trunk in here as well and just sort of tap that in around the base it's going to be kind of buried in the foliage a little bit tree roots are not going to be as obvious we could go perhaps to the inking studio pen and we can start with maybe let's put it down to 20 percent size and 100 percent opacity and if you press on harder then you get darker light or thicker lines or press on lightly you get thinner lines so you can use this now to just trail off some branches press lightly if that feels appropriate to the image whatever feels appropriate to your image I don't really feel the need to do too much of this and then whoops we'll go to the black for the more foreground one as well perhaps there's just that edge there maybe on that tree so I'm going to take that layer 9 put on the alpha lock go in with the airbrushing medium brush go back to my colors maybe use the first color on oh sorry the second color on the bottom row two percent size maybe 20 percent strength maybe it's just add a few kind of suggestions of line in here so it's affected by the light that's there maybe just divide that up a little bit don't need to do too much of it we just don't want it to look too flat really go to the layer turn back off the alpha lock and i'm also going to go back to the third color on the middle row with the organic rainforest brush maybe top end of two percent size 100 percent opacity and perhaps let's just put that up a little bit more maybe up into the three percent 100 percent opacity just to add some foliage for these you don't really need to labor it too much for this one too I'm going to create a new layer above that layer 10 all of this is still underneath the light layer i think that without that i think it doesn't make as much sense so layer 10 is still underneath the light layer i'm going to stick with the rainforest brush i'm going to go to the third color on the top row two percent size maybe 50 percent strength maybe there's just some areas back here so it's not quite as vibrant green but we're just giving it a little bit more light so it doesn't go straight into the most vibrant green there's other kind of layers of detail perhaps we can go back to the second color on the top row blend that in a little bit more maybe even in some of these areas you can have that affecting things too bury the base of this tree for example although that might be useful to do with a more vibrant color so let's go for the fourth color on the middle row some of that especially the kind of bottom area here blend that in a little bit so i think what i'd like to do is go back to layer four where we had the background kind of one of the background colors on top of the background layer so layer four i'm going to go to the black color first color on the bottom row i'm going to go in with the airbrushing soft brush 10 percent size let's put it down to about 20 percent strength and i'm just going to start darkening it in in this lower part and i'm going to allow it to sort of fade upwards want the stone to kind of blend in a little bit with its environment you can still kind of make out the overall form of it and that's fine do it a few times bring some of that darkness into that general area like so i think that works better i'm going to go to the six color on the middle row and i'm going in with the rainforest brush i'm going to have it at two percent size and it's pretty low and maybe 90 percent strength and I'm just going to start building in real concentrations of moss coming in from the edges. Maybe there's some stones that are just completely covered in moss. So it just becomes a green kind of blob shape next to a stone. Just a mound of, of moss, literally. Like that. You can see that effect. And maybe it creeps up onto the rocks too. So again, just start to creep and kind of blend it in it around at the edges of some of these stones. In fact, for this one, I'm just going to 
pretty much completely consume it with the moss. Just go over that top edge and then as it gets around to the shadow part, just tap it a few times, let it kind of merge over. And once you started to get that effect, we can go to a lighter green. So let's go for the seventh color on the middle row. Same setting, so 2% size, 90% opacity. And I'm just pressing lightly, just dusting it along that top edge. And then I can start to come back into this area. That's be a bit more broken, just to start to build up that sense of texture. I think that when you just start to go over the edges those kind of green mounds with this highlight it just brings them out in a really quite pleasing way back to the six color we'll kind of retreat that back into our scene a little bit i mean it is quite a rich green so if we want to preserve the sense that things are a bit cooler in the distance we don't want to go too far back with it i don't mind just taking it to the kind of middle area again just creep it around the edges of some of these stones. We can always reclaim these stones a little bit with the gray. Maybe just a little one there. And then we're gonna go around the edge of this. Over here as well. Another form coming in here. And it's important to leave the gaps. We want to see these little channels that run around these have some smaller ones that are just completely covered there with moss but it is important to leave some gaps between them otherwise you're going to lose the sense of any stones one here in the lower corner it is a really vibrant green you know it's almost too vibrant we could always go to that layer tap on it and put on the alpha lock and maybe with something like the airbrushing soft brush go to Maybe the second color on the middle row, 5% size, 20% opacity, and just go over it if we need to subdue it, knock it back a little bit, make it more subtle, and then perhaps we can go over with the highlights, and that will work to our advantage. Go over it a few times, again, just in a bid to kind of subdue it, knock it back, then go on there, turn off the alpha lock again, back in with the organic rainforest brush, Back in with something more vibrant, maybe even the eighth color. And well, we know we've got some really strong, vibrant colors back here. Perhaps we could just creep it down this way. So 2% size, 90% opacity. And we don't want to lose out on chances to really sell the illusion of sunlight illuminating these. So let's just go over it with this color a little bit. Perhaps we could turn that really down to 30%. And again, just creep that green down into these areas a little bit more a bit more fragmented but around that top edge just a little bit more concentrated back up again 90% work on some of these more distant areas really ramp it up doesn't matter if it all kind of mushes together and collides a little bit in that area back there I'm, I'm quite happy with that I think the overall effect is working I'm going to go back to my layers let's just really think about where we've put different things so let's go back to layer six tap on it and turn off the alpha lock we'll go to our lighter colors we'll go perhaps for the fourth color we'll go back in again with the rainforest brush so let's put it at two percent size 90 percent strength as we come into this area we're just going to use it to further kind of build in our sense of the the light colors on the stones Build in that grey. I feel like it's got a little bit lost. Put it back in there. Get some nice highlights into this foreground one as well. There's nothing wrong with that. And it, it is quite textural. I guess one thing we could do with this to really just enhance the look of it is we could go in with a smudge tool so let's go to the smudge, put the smudge, maybe the soft brush with an airbrushing, 2% size, maybe 80% strength or so. And then if need be, we can just go in and kind of, well, that's a bit strong, let's put it down to 30%. We could just go in and mush some of this together a little, a little bit in places. We don't need to do it completely consistently. We'll kind of just mush it in a little bit. I think that could help 
bind it together a little bit more. Not, again, not too much. Perhaps I've done a little bit much in those foreground, but it helps with the middle distance ones. That's kind of pretty good. Again, back to maybe the airbrushing soft brush and we'll go for the six color. And we do have a really nice vibrant color to use. Let's put it down to 1% size and 40% strength. And we'll just use this now to bring in a crispness. Some of these stones that are just catching the light now in this back area. And then really bring it out one or two of these as well. When we have the strong vibrant green, we're going to have this really nice warm color hitting the stone. Maybe just a little bit of it there, not much. Again, that just brings the light backwards into the scene. Fourth color. Still with the soft brush. Perhaps we can just trace a bit of an edge. Get some of this effect in here. No particular technique, just kind of creating a bit of sharpness. General sideways movement. And then perhaps we can go back in with the organic rainforest brush. Bring that mix in there as well. 90% is a bit strong for that. Let's maybe put that to 30% strength. And Back up to layer 10, back in with the organic rainforest brush and we'll go back maybe to the seventh color on the middle row. Really low down, perhaps into the 1% size and maybe 50% strength. And we just want to be a little bit more defined in some of these mossy rocks here in the slight more foreground area. I'm also going to put the size up to maybe 4% and maybe just tap in some areas of foliage slightly more foreground. I think also a cooler color might be quite useful for this area. Maybe the first color on the top row. Some cooler colors. We are more in the kind of shadow parts. So we could have it mixing in here. I think between the kind of the rocks, maybe we should have a different kind of look. So we can go in We'll, we'll stay on layer 10. We'll go in with the airbrushing soft brush and we'll go to the seventh color. 2% size and 20% strength. And I'm just gonna create some stones, similar kind of shapes, but a collection of different sizes, some that overlap, but we definitely want to preserve some of the gaps. So just get some kind of effect in here initially. Kind of in between some of these. And then we'll go perhaps to the 10th color. Zoom in. 10% size. Just bring out one or two of these. They're in. Perhaps the sun is just catching it a little bit in places. Bringing out these kind of stones to have a different quality. Just vary it up a little bit. I think it's going to be a little bit too mono. Chrome otherwise. I think that helps. It gives it a warmth, gives it another dimension, which I think is quite useful. Just going to spend a moment or two in this foreground area. So I, I think on layer 10, we've got all that texture. If we just go to it and go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it in slightly. So just 3%, I think that it's a little bit too sharp as it was, and that does help. Still on layer 10, I'm gonna go in with the rainforest brush, obviously still. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with the end color on the middle row, 2% size, 80% strength, and I, I just wanna push this even further in places. I feel like we can push the vibrancy of that light even further, I want this to really seeing really glow with the sunlight so again just look for those top edges of stones or areas amongst the foliage really bring them out even more i think perhaps i'm just looking up back through my layers i'm going to layer five and just slide and duplicate it and i just think it brings out some of the textures it makes it work rather more efficiently layer seven similarly so slide duplicate it i think it just brings out some of the light in that area 
ramps it up even more. I like that effect. We just need to spend a little time on these very much more foreground shapes. We are going for the overall effect and everything is going to be super crispy in the scene, but we just need to be a little bit more defined on these two rocks, for example. So in terms of where they are, well, let's go back to layer six. It has those two rocks on it. I'm going to go in with the smudge, put the smudge to the medium brush with an airbrushing, 2% size, 50% strength. And that's just really, again, I did this before earlier on, but I just want to smooth out some of these textures. Like so then I can go back in with maybe the airbrushing soft brush, go to our fourth color on the bottom row, 2% size, 60% opacity. And I'm just going to start tapping in and just refining a little bit more tracing around our kind of edge giving it a bit more definition. Maybe just tap in a few extra points of texture in our rock. And then I'm gonna go back up to layer 10. I'm gonna go in with the seventh color on the middle row with the rainforest brush, 2% size and 60% strength. And I'm just gonna go in on layer 10 just start to add a little bit more definition into some of these mossy areas around the edges of some of these shapes. Fill them in a bit more clearly. And then maybe go up a notch, so the eighth color, 1% size and just really a bit sharper. Allows us to be just that little bit more controlled. I'm going to go in with the rainforest brush. Let me go back one to the fifth color on the middle row. 2% size, only just though, and about 40% strength. And I'm just going to build in some of these mossy shapes. Perhaps we'll go a bit higher on that. We'll go up to the 60%. Just build in the greenery surrounding these stones. Let's just create another one there. Build it in a little bit more. Again, just defining some of these mounds a little bit just scribbling them in one over in this corner perhaps just scribble it in just to get a bit more of a, a neater edge on the edge of this perhaps it could even come kind of surrounding this bit of stone don't spend too long on these and what i'll probably do is take most of my layers so i'm going to go from layers five to ten and just pinch them together like that. So they're all in one layer. I'm going to go with the selection. I'm going to grab the bottom bit just like this. That kind of strange shape. There you go. Close the loop. Feather. And I'm going to turn the feather up to about 40%. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur that in to about the 8%. Deselect both of them. And you can see it's just blurred it in and I put our real focus into that central area. And I think that helps the overall image quite a lot. Okay, I think that's definitely working well. I think a couple of last touches on this very same layer. We'll go in with the airbrushing soft brush and we'll go to the sixth color on the bottom row. And I just feel like if I put it down at 2% size, the lowest part and 60% strength, careful to add little anomalies and just go in there and just ramp up some of that lightest color. I think I can bring out the effect of some of those stones just a little bit more. There you go. I think that's working really quite nicely. I'm going to leave that at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Really quite pleased with the effects, but I am going to push it a little bit further over at my Patreon page. There is a link down in the video description that will take you to my Patreon exclusives. So check that out if you are interested in doing a little bit more. Other than that, please give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't done already, and I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.